Good evening. I'm Max Porter. By day, I am the writer, editor, lore keeper, board game designer, and stream host at City State Entertainment. By night, and tonight, as with many nights, I am a humble dungeon master, toiling away to create an awesome campaign for my players. And if you are joining me, you are joining at an excellent moment because I am working on a dream and I'm trying an experiment. I am writing a dream of distant spirit, a dream for a player character who is at a critical moment in their career we are following up on a secret that was given out at the start of the campaign. I gave each player a secret in return for their writing uh, a history. And as I write as I give out dreams for significant events certain things are revealed that otherwise would be secret and I am trying out writing this in script format so we'll see how it goes it is highly experimental, and this may not be the most convenient way to write the dreams. Normally I write them in normal text, but I'm trying something a little different. Hopefully the writing is visible on screen. It's probably okay. Okay. So I'm going to create a quick uh, outline of the points I want to hit with the dream. Similar to, similar to how I have always done dreams, really. In order to have that, make sure I hit all the points I want to hit. Oh, this is probably too small to read. Watch the ship called Distant Spirit come into port. port. We speak of the captain. Le Blanc. She is a formidable pirate, mm, privateer, parenthesis pirate.
commissioned by the... Hmm. And some call her a thief king. I'll think about that. The players already know that information, but I don't want to spend too much time in exposition, especially of stuff that they already know. Uh, she is the, uh, but that said, she is, the, I've got to note this down for myself, leader of the Steel Tooth Pack, a gang of brigands and pirates that terrorize the Thunder Gulf and the entire western coast. So, I may not go into all those details in the dream because the players kind of already know it. It might be worth repeating because nothing really enters players' minds unless you say it three times. Not an insult, it's just the way it is. Okay, so the two sentries are watch our uh, debate. The two sentries debate over whether or not uh, the Whether or not distant spirit will swing into port to raid the town, or if uh, the captain, the legendary captain, been chartered, uh, chartered, 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 by the Duke. The legendary captain has been chartered by the Duke. And will uh, pass them by. One sentry is vehemently Advocating that they sound the alarm. The second is against it and offers a variety of reasons ranging from It's not 
distant spirit. Even if it is she'd never dare attack Westhead. And even if she, well, I'm right now basically pre-writing the dialogue so that I can write it out more fully. I'm just, I'm just making quick little uh, phrases here so that I can then take each one and then expand it into an exchange between the two sentries uh, in the in the dream. Okay, so. And even if she wanted to, she probably has already been uh, given a writ of privateering by the Duke. And even if she hasn't, what else? Even if she hasn't, uh, we need to raise the tension. We need to raise the stakes a little. Uh, and even if she hasn't, it would be really stupid to report on the actions of one so much more powerful. Let's just make an enemy. And even if not, it would be the height of idiocy. I'm just gonna keep trying to build in each uh, in each exchange. I want there to be a back and forth between the sentries, a bit of dialogue, a bit of uh, uh, rising tension that's going to swing us into a surprise twist at the end of the dream. That will be our climax. So it would be the height if idiocy, height of idiocy, to ring the bell. I, I can't. Should it be? Yeah, ring. Maybe they have a bell hidden up on the on the stony cliffs above uh, above the town of Westhead. It would be the height of idiocy to ring the bell and let the uh, enemy know their position, just so. Uh, just so the captain can kill them immediately. The one, uh, the first century, uh, as the ship, ship passes close under their hiding place high on the cliffs. Finally grows too frustrated by the argument and slightly suspicious. Hang on a second. Apparently mouse deer were discovered in Vietnam. Cool. Uh, and slightly suspicious. And turns to uh, hit the giant bell with a hammer. With the, okay, the log or hammer, whatever they would use. The second century
whispers. I'm sorry, my brother. But the captain gave the captain Capitan Captain gave her orders. Gave me orders. He pulls out a crossbow and shoots the uh, the other sentry in the back. A scream rings out and is silent. The ship glides into port where the white haired Puck LeBlanc alights, peering up at the dark cliffs. She will meet the Duke to discuss terms tonight. She needs a bit of dialogue there, I think. She tells uh, her dark visaged that's just a fun word um, she tells her glowering first mate that she will meet the duke to discuss terms tonight okay it's a bit of a dark dream Exterior rock. So I'm so now gonna I'm, I'm trying an experiment. I'm gonna write this in script format Normally, I would then take these notes and just kind of fill that in 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 plain text uh, That's what I've done for my other dreams, but this time I'm trying something a little different. I'm going to write it in script format So those are my notes And I've had enough of this song. It's distracting me So let's fill that in. Two centuries watched this ship called Distant Spirit come into port. Man, this all these songs are not working out for me. Something else. It's really distracting me. I need to get pick the right music here. Hmm. Well, that didn't work. All right. All of a sudden, it's not working. What's wrong? The songs have been silenced. Hmm. Roll 20 is not working for me. 
Okay. I'll live. Rocky Cliff over Ocean, night. A cluster of lights indicates a large ship down on the dark waters. We are looking over the shoulder of two sentries. Armed and armored in dark uniforms keeping watch should I swoop down and take a should we look at the ship I think that's what we should do. Should we should we go right into the dialogue? Yeah, let let's let's set it up a little bit. Let's set it up a little bit. Man, what is going on with the music on roll twenty? It's not working. Come on, roll twenty. Don't fail me now. Well, that's a bummer. Not sure what's going on with that. Do I need to name these guys? I don't think so. What is this kind of indent happening here? That's... That's not how that's supposed to look. Okay. But it wants to center it over there. So it just gave me this huge indent, but it didn't... center it? Hmm... formatting problems. Alright. Well, this is an experiment. I'm going to see it through to the end. I don't know if this if the if the script format is is working perfectly, but I think it's still worth pursuing. Alright. Uh they speak of the captain, Puck LeBlanc. Is that it? that the ship is that her ship
Oh, dialogue. Oh, okay, I just did it wrong. So, that is how that's supposed to be. And this should be... Okay, I, I see. I see. I see how it's supposed to work. <sighs> okay. So this will be Sentry 2. Impossible. Hmm, I don't like impossible. That's... It can't be. Reports are that the steel tooth uh, the steel tooth pack Steel Tooth Pack rated far north a few days ago. Gonna be a hotkey for this. Oh, I need to put in the new character. Eh. Skip it for now. Maybe I'll say the, just so that it's crystal clear. And I'm telling you that's not possible. Uh, OK. 
Okay, and then we're going to do some action. Pulls out a spyglass. And shifts position. Craggy rocks or the rocky crags? painted in elegant letters on the hall. Where it reads, crashing over the breakers. Mm, it's not really the breakers. Crashing over a wave, we see distant spirit and all of its glory. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to capitalize. I guess just important words. Just doing it my way. Uh, tough looking. Pirates? Pirates. Scramble amongst the uh, rigging in the orange, uh, in the orange lantern glow. The orange glow of lanterns. That works. Century one, good old century one. I knew, I knew it. 
seems like the most natural thing to say there. It's either I knew it or I told you so. Hmm. Captain Puck LeBlanc is on that ship. He um snaps him. What's the word? Telescoping. Pushing, closing his spyglass. His spyglass closed. And looks at the his fellow. Shifting position again on the rocks as the ship, uh, as he, as they track the movement of the lantern specks. I don't know if that actually matters. All right, so we have our Sentry One saying, making this declaration. So the other guy needs to immediately fight back, because we need to inject some... We're, we're kind of... We're building up to... We need to inject some, some tension to this. Easiest just to copy paste this in future. Maybe it'll let me. Um, maybe it'll keep the formatting. Not really sure. I probably have to do something like this. I'll figure it out. I just want to make it a little faster than popping up the box each time. don't know that. And even if a living legend... Uh, it's awkward. I mean, if she is... Okay, all right, enough of the Sugar Plum alternate song. Is this working now? 
I'll take it. <sighs> what was the first note? What was the first objection? Going back here. The leader still sees the pack, gang and brands. Okay. We don't need all that detail in here. Actually, and even if she somehow got here, got uh, to us from raiding. Get turning into kind of a long line. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll put in a town name in a minute. Actually, I know exactly what town. Let me check my. Let me check the lore that my player wrote. Uh, that's going to have this dream where he invented a town name and I'm just gonna straight up use it because I don't mind Wuturum sure few days ago. Which is probably been chartered by the Duke by now. Okay, I'm gonna try this to just do the formatting for me? Yay! And I think it also copied the formatting for the dialogue, so that's good. Okay, that's gonna make it easy. I'm go I may need to go back and give them names, because Sentry 1 and Sentry 2 for this whole scene is a little dull. I think it would be more interesting if I, if in the dream, they had names. Even though they're minor characters, I can just give them simple, not particularly flowery names. Also, I should decide whether they're humans or elves or what. The town that they are sentries for, in the dream is a town that's mostly human. So they're probably humans, or at least half human. Uh, what should I replace? I need, I need, I just need simple names for, for these guys. Because the flowery names are for these major characters, like Captain Puck LeBlanc, and then the Duke's name, which I need to look up in my notes. All right, so Sentry 1, uh, I'll figure out their names in a minute. Sentry 1 is going to respond to to that. Angry, but keeping, what is it, parenthesis? I think it should be a parenthesis. Not now. 
Um, who's saying things they may not know? That's awkward. Let's smooth that out a little bit. saying things they don't know. This is doing something weird with the formatting here. So this is dialogue now. I'll just delete this. I don't know what it's doing there anyway. Sometimes you have to write things just to fix them in your mind. But they're not necessary for the reader. sound the alarm. Ring the bell. Raise the alarm for Westhead. All right, Sentry 2. That's the one thing you don't want to happen. than us. We need to be careful. Should probably insert a page number in here. Figure that out in a minute. Okay. One sentry is vehemently advocating that they sound the alarm. We need to be careful. Sentry one. There are big things happening here, bigger than us. We need to be careful. 
Uh, he's climbing down. First sentry finishes climbing down. Uh, climbing. Uh, the first sentry um, second sentry I'm going to need to give them names. I'm, gonna, I'm losing track here. Second century reaches out to help to help the first all right time for names otherwise I'm not gonna be able to remember all this Hey there, the Mammoth Will screen name. How you doing, my friend? Does not realize it is past midnight. It is past midnight, isn't it? But I'm on a roll here. More or less. I need to pause to grab some names. I need some good D&D &D simple simple names but you know fantasy names <sighs> it's always good maybe I'll give them funny names not too funny Maybe I'll name them... say rat is the one who stabs the other in the back of course giving rats a bad name here Bob the Barbarian, Steve the Sorcerer, Jan from Accounting are perfectly D&D-esque names. Sure. called uh, nicknamed rat shakes his head uh, 
Well, all right, what's the other name? Bob the Barbarian, Steve the Sorcerer, Jan from Accounting. Rat and... Mouse? Sure. They're a pair. It's a little more normal to say somebody's name, like to get their attention at the beginning of a sentence. One is shorter than the, uh, one is a woman, uh, one, it, okay, we look over the shoulder of mouse first, a shorter woman. with neat hair and a mm, slightly disheveled uniform. Sentry nicknamed Rat shakes his head. Uh, shakes his uh, head. By contrast, his hair is sarcastic. No worries, the math no screen name. I thought that was a uh, perfectly normal message. No worries, my friend. Hey, anytime you've got to head to bed. Don't mind me.
Uh, I'm talking to my artist friend that plays D&D with me, and she is thinking about making an illustration of some of the characters of the game, uh, which, by the way, are uh, there's a bunch of up over at uh, supercommoner.com, if you check that out. Uh, but I think that she's was thinking about making a punk tiefling, uh, which is one character. So, a water sorcerer half orc. Or any interpretation of one of the thief kings. Oh boy, the math screen and probably up until between two or three. I just lost track of time sometime around uh, when did I eat last? Brother, you've got to eat. I have the opposite problem. <laughs> Listen to your favorite relaxing music. Imagine yourself in a relaxing place, the beach maybe. And just let your mind sail into the land of Nod. Greasy and un count as weapons are uh, carefully Prominent, mm. many, and mm, no, his weapons are polished. Probably the last bit of dialogue I'm gonna well I gotta head toward uh, finishing up here because it's late and I've got work to do writing to do at my day job tomorrow imagine Mersault and Gregor Samsa sitting at a bar playing a game of let me tell you about my day. That's kind of how it felt. Oof. That's a rough day, brother. I hope tomorrow is better. That sounds like a rough time. Ah. <sighs> 
sometimes it seems, uh, you know, what is, uh, what is it that, um, Bob Ross always used to say? We gotta go through some, uh, some tough times so that we know when the good times arrive. I'm waiting on the good times now. <laughs> You didn't kill any Algerians, so you got that going for you. Well done. That and you're something of a uh, of an of a beer expert, am I right? This can't be right. Uh, action. There we go. Uh, I don't get the Algerians thing, but I got the I got that going for me. Part. Yeah, sorry, man, for those screen name. I can't always keep up with you. Your references come quick and they come fast. Uh, careful is exactly what I'm saying. I feel like mouse doesn't always use the right words. In the L'Etranger, kills a fellow Algerian by accident. <coughs> yes. I read The Stranger in French class, The Man with No Screen Name, by Camus. That was, I had a hard time getting to that front because I saw, yep, I get it now. <laughs> so what you're saying, Amantha Screen Dame, is that you are a product of your circumstances and whatever happens around you, that is the mode you get into. It has been a long day for all. Well, I wish you a restful night and an easy day tomorrow. <sighs> I feel like Mouse doesn't always use the right words, so I'm, I'm comfortable with her using incorrect grammar here. I feel like I need to specify two human sentries. One nicknamed Mouse first. Snow. Yeah. Just want to be clear. Oh, you're so welcome, man. No screen name. a simple enough thing. I care about you, my friend. 
I want your career in stand-up to take off, for one thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Careful is exactly what I'm saying. I think we have an opportunity for a bit of quick dialogue here. So I'm going to have the rat respond immediately. And say, even if that is her ship, and even if she's on it. I don't want to repeat the entire scene. Sometimes you have to write things for yourself to fix them in your mind so that you remember what's going on. And then you delete it later because it's unnecessary for the reader. Because it takes longer to write something than it does to read something. So I'm writing this to fix it in my mind. Uh, even if that is her ship, and even if she's on it, and even if she hasn't been chartered by the Duke already, what in all the hells do you think is gonna happen uh, when we sound an alarm. She'll fire on us. We'll be dead. I think that we can shorten this. Uh, I need some more interesting word than dead. Will be pin cushions. Yeah, pin cushions, because that is going to set up. That is going to set up rat killing mouse later in the scene the end of the scene uh let's see what did we outline here never dare attack would be the stupid door the enemy's most powerful you would not mean the height of it is to ring the bell Let the enemy know their position just so the captain can kill them immediately i skipped uh this part because in the moment it doesn't feel like it makes sense so I'm cutting that, that bit of, of outline. Uh, and I'm just going to move forward quickly to the next bit of the scene. I need to put page numbers on this. This is, this is, I'm losing track. Uh, page number, header. Ah! Let's try that again. Uh, where was I? Page number, that's what we need. Okay. Uh, bam. Okay. So this is page two. For a dream. Now each page is going to take me about a minute to describe in the player's dream. Uh, 
Not she. Uh, the shipple. It's not the strongest of dialogue, but it'll do. It'll do. It'll do for now. Alright, so now I need the... This is... I need to kind of set the moment and establish that this is a dramatic moment. This is the uh, this is the moment where the scene is going to kind of take a dark turn. So what should he do? We'll be pin cushions. Their voices rise to a hoarse, angry whispers. As we see the privateering pirate ship. Let's call it a pirate ship. That's what it is, right? As we see the pirate ship pass below the dark cliffs. Pass below the dark cliffs. Mantho screen name says the lost track of page numbers of Philia. I said I was going to have stuff up for a legit portfolio by the end of October. Pushing two weeks into November, I have a desktop with more PSDs on it that I plan on uploading. No idea what anything is anymore beyond the date I save them as. <sighs> Ah, yes. A well-organized... I feel ya. Uh, a well-organized archive of all the materials you've created is critical to the creator. I'm sure you would agree. Well, all you can do is open them up one by one and name them something that makes sense and put them in various folders... Uh, by category, so that you can find them again later. Am I right? I I have to do that with writing pieces all the time. What's the point 
of being up here. If we don't ring the bell. when a ship comes in. When a ship comes to Westhead. Action. She points and we follow the line of her finger to spot the grand port city of Westhead. lit up with its own night lanterns and tier upon tier of buildings rising up the coast. Uh, Torches. Rising up the dark coast. The black coast. Renamed the earliest works largely so I can finish the things at least. Get them to a good enough point is my advice. Although I know very little about such things. Uh, the man with no screen name. But my advice is if you have old projects, get them to the good enough point. And don't... Don't... Uh, don't let being a perfectionist stop you. But I don't know everything. Uh, so you got to do what you think is best. Uh, they may want to have had the reveal of Westhead earlier. But I may have to sleep on that. Because it is almost one in the morning here. And I know exactly what's going to happen next. So I need a response from Rat. I'll just write this down. Response from Rat. She turns in frustration to go to the bell, parenthesis, bell reveal. We may need to put that earlier. Mostly little touches and polishing. All right, totally. Man, I need to update that Moobot message because the Sprawling City campaign has given way to other projects other games <laughs> and the betrayal plays out then cut to Puck on the screen 
forms first, mate. And we're out. Alright. So I know what's going to happen. I've got it all laid out. This has been interesting. Uh, it's been fun to kind of write in a different... Um, to write in a different... Uh, genre? Different format? To use the script format? Uh, I'm wondering if it's going to serve the, the visuals of the dream, and I think it will. Uh, it's good to, it's good to kind of stretch a different muscle. And it made me turn this into more of a kind of a scene. Which, a dramatic scene that I, that I think, uh, I think the players and etc. will really appreciate. Cool. It made me it made me think about this differently, and I think that is really worth worth doing. Alright, so this is just my notes to myself. And I think I'm going to have to turn this off now. So, thank you, the Mathno Screening. Thank you to the other people who hopped into chat, or at least hopped into the stream. You didn't say anything, but thanks for coming by. Uh, thanks to anyone who watches this later. You're awesome. And uh, the Mathno Screening, once more, I will wish you a very restful night. And a bright and excellent day tomorrow, no matter what happens. So, good night to you all, and until next time, come back for more Super Commoner D&D &D action. Bye-bye.